I'm John A. Buchanan. Now in this video we're going to look at a feature that used to be called one thing and is now called something else. But before we get to that I'm just going to play you a few bars of the drums of this project. They sound like this. Okay, so what we've got here is a collection of audio files where there is no processing going on within the mixer. If I open up the mixer, you can see that there is absolutely no effects, um, sort of slots that are filled up. Nothing's happening to process the audio. So the little bits of reverb that you're hearing on some of these percussion instruments is baked in. And this is a really common thing when we work with loops from sample libraries or when we're dragging and dropping in audio that maybe has been created by someone we're collaborating with, that maybe the effects are kind of baked in. Now what I want to be able to do with some of the audio within this project is I want to be able to end up with a much cleaner, less reverberant sound in parts of this track that I've got right now. In other words, I want to be able to remove the reverb and I want to be able to remove the delay from some of the audio files that have got those effects baked in. And of course, there's no immediate way to be able to do that. But what we can do is to use a feature within Logic which used to be called Strip Silence. And either Apple decided that was just far too sexy a name for it, hmm, or um, uh, maybe there were other reasons why they had to get rid of that term. Who knows? Who knows? But anyway, what it's now called is slightly less sexy, and it's called Remove Silence from Audio Region. Mm. Okay, let's show you firstly what I mean. I'm going to just shine a light on this little stick part here, which has got a reverb baked in. In other words, this file has been captured with the reverb on top of the stick sound that's generating it. Okay, so obviously I can't just remove the reverb. I can't just get rid of it or apply processing to this, which just completely gets rid of the reverb. But what I can do, of course, is to make all of these individual uh, stick moments, the transients, the only part of the audio that we can hear. And the moment I do that, effectively the reverb is going to disappear from the gaps. Now I could do that manually. I could make this much, much bigger. I could get my scissors out and I could chop up all of these individual um, audio files, all these little regions. And of course, what I'd be left with would be a whole series of chops and I could make all of the intervening little moments much shorter, but we can do that much more quickly. What I'm going to do is to click on this region. I'm going to come to the functions menu and I'm going to come to remove silence from audio region. Still can't get used to the fact that that's a really boring name. But nevertheless, I'm going to click on this button. And when I do that, up comes this very useful box. And what this effectively does is to say, OK, well, you need to tell me what silence looks like. In other words, what is the volume threshold that has to be exceeded for an individual bit of audio to be retained? And at what point does that become quiet enough that I'm going to chop it up and turn it into silence? So effectively, what I have a chance to do within this box is effectively to determine the um, threshold. And the moment I make this loud enough, then effectively there is no chopping. In other words, all of the audio file is going to be retained. But as I drop away the volume, what we're going to discover is that, of course, we end up with a series of individual chops. So I can use this guide to determine which bits of the audio are going to be retained. And it's very easy to see with a waveform like this which parts they are. And I can see that there are going to be lots of silent gaps between each one. That's useful. Now, I've actually got a little bit of extra control here as well. So in other words, what I can do is to select a pre-attack time. So in other words, a bit of audio that's going to be tagged onto the front of each of these individual chops to ensure that I don't just inadvertently cut the beginning off the start of the transient. So that's what's happening here. And equally, I've got an equivalent from a post-release time point of view. But I'm going to leave that at zero. Remember, because this is effectively going to provide a series of audio regions, I can manually adjust them again afterwards if I want to. And what I've got a chance to do is to also um, select a minimum time to accept to silence. How long does a bit of audio need to last in order for it to become potentially silent? And again, I've got a control there if I want to. And lastly, I've got an opportunity to set up what's called a zero crossing. And what that should do is to mean that all of the audio chops only go to silence at a point where the waveform literally appears to zero. And that should stop any of these audio files from clicking. Again, we can apply fades if we need to. Okay, lots of words for me. What happens when I press OK? 
<gasps> that was exciting, wasn't it? And suddenly my sticky reverb sound sounds like this. Okay, so of course there's a little bit of reverb on the actual stick where it plays, but really by the time we have a chance to hear that, by the way there's nothing I can do about that, it's baked into the audio file, but we've certainly got something which is going to feel a whole lot drier than it did before. Okay, so that's dealt with that. Now, there are other files that I've got within this project which aren't using reverb but are using delay. So for example, this little low percussion instrument here, what happens with this? Okay, so again, this rhythm is being slightly confused by the fact that there are individual delay taps. Now, what's going to be quite interesting is that the individual original hits here are not going to be a lot louder than the delay taps that are being, that they are triggering. That's the end of that sentence that I actually want to use. So let's see what happens when I, again, apply exactly the same processor. So we come back in here, effectively I'm going to learn this key command. So this is going to be control and X, which is going to get me to this um, shortcut for remove silence from audio region. And when I do it this time, okay, well actually it turns out it's retained the same settings as before. It looks like I am getting rid of some of these and I'm going to assume that the delays are going to be ever so slightly quieter than the originals. So I'm assuming that these are delays, but what happens if we go in either direction? Okay, so we're going to obviously lose individual uh, parts, so we're in a position either to keep them all but to effectively get rid of the gaps in between, or I suppose I could set a threshold here which kind of strips this out and potentially creates a new little groove for me. In other words, I don't really know which ones I'm retaining here, but I know I want less of them, so I'm almost sort of, well again to slightly extend the analogy of what this used to be called, slightly flirting with this audio file. Hmm. Did I just say that out loud? I think I did. Never mind, too late now. So effectively what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep these ones, whatever they are, and again I'm going to press OK, and now I get a new little groove. So between these two files it feels like we've stripped things out, and probably that's going to be a bit more interesting for it. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. I had no idea what these uh, retained files were going to do, but now we've got a little bit of groove happening here, which I think is quite interesting. Okay, I've got a couple more within this project as well. So here's another delay-based um, sound, which is a kind of higher stick sound. With a little bit of pitch in it as well. Okay, well, the key command is Control X. Ooh, look at that. I'm getting pro at this straight away. So, what I'm going to do is to just sort of try out a slightly higher threshold, oh, sorry, a lower threshold here to retain a couple more of these. But again, I definitely want this to be a little bit more chopped. Let's try this. Okay, so those three together now sound like this. So firstly, what's happening here is that obviously I'm retaining fewer elements of the original audio file, which means that the whole thing is going to be a bit more sparse, but also crucially what we're doing is we're kind of despacing these files. And it's also worth saying that we can apply processing like this to files that don't actually have effects baked in, but that do have a kind of release time to them. This shaker part, for instance, there isn't any reverb on this sound, and yet the individual slices of it do last longer than I'd like them to. So particularly on those downbeats, that kind of long open shaker sort of sound feels a bit too sustained to me. So again, what I'm going to do is to use the same key command. Yeah, okay, so it looks like I'm going to be able to sort of chop this up and maybe sort of make all of these slices a little bit shorter. I want to keep them all, but at the same time, I just want to be in a position where it's been sliced. Okay, it looks like that's going to work quite nicely. This is the long one on the downbeat, and then here are the two short ones, and again, the long one here is sort of being chopped in half. So I'm going to hit OK, but I suspect that for an audio file like this, a little bit of fading might be useful. Sure enough, you can hear those individual clicks. So it won't take much. I'm going to use a fade in value of literally one millisecond and a fade out value of two, and that should get rid of the clicks. And remember, because we had that little bit of pre roll, in other words, a tiny bit of audio before the transient, I don't think we're going to lose the front off these hits.
And that's working nicely. So effectively, even though I don't have reverb on this sound, we've achieved, again, a kind of drier feeling as a result. So what I'm tempted to do now is to bring all of these back into the project that we're working on here. What I'm going to do is to get rid of these regions. Remember, effectively, they are the originals. I'm going to take all of this group and I'm going to copy it across to the next four bars. So effectively, this just happens twice. So we've got all of those happening twice round and we'll bring in the other musical elements of this track as well. And now what we should find is that the open section, the kind of verse section if you like, is effectively going to be dry and close and tight sounding and then it's going to open up much more for the second half of the track. So this feature, remove audio or no, remove silence from audio region, still not a great name, is it? I'm still trying to get used to saying it. I'm still sort of failing. Nevertheless, what is interesting about this feature is that it gives us an opportunity to change the spatial sort of feeling of the sounds that we're working with. It gives us a chance to easily and readily use this kind of threshold control to be able to chop up audio. And in that sense, it's a little bit like working with a noise gate. We've looked at other ways of editing audio in the past in previous episodes, but this one is a really useful one if what you want to do is to kind of de-space the audio that you're working with.